Robin, um, at this time uh, we would like to open this for anybody that would like to come up and speak. My name is Goldia Colden. I'm the mother of Phoenix Colden. I did not plan on being here today, nor did I plan on speaking. But I came with uh, Theda, who is the mother of Christian Ferguson, who has been missing for several years. Tomorrow will mark the year and a half. I'm okay. I'm all right. Will mark a year and a half that Phoenix left our driveway. It was um, December 18th, 2011, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon that Phoenix pulled out of our driveway at the house that she picked out for us to live in after we came from California to St. Louis. We no longer live in that house because we, her dad and I, made a decision after Phoenix uh, left our driveway and we didn't hear from her that we had to do something ourselves to find Phoenix. And you know the biggest chunk of money that goes out is your house note, right? So we decided that we were not going to pay Wells Fargo. That we were going to use that money to look for our daughter because our experience with the St. Louis County Police was not very good. The night of uh, December 18th, around 2 o'clock, I knew something was wrong because Phoenix had never stayed away from home all night, nor had she stayed out past, say, 1.20 a.m. And I kept waking my husband up and I'm saying, Lawrence, something's wrong, something's wrong. He says, oh, she's okay, she's okay. Around 4.30, I said, Lawrence, Phoenix isn't home yet. He says, she's okay, she's okay. So finally I went to bed and got up in the morning. She was not in her room. Her car was not in the driveway. It was not on the street, and it wasn't in, in back. So I woke him up and I said, Phoenix, something's wrong. Phoenix isn't home. She's okay. She's okay. He says that now. She's okay. He made me wait until later that day, and I called the St. Louis County Police, and an officer came out, I gave him, we gave him all the information, and he asked for her birth date. I said, May 23rd, 1988. That's her birth date. He stopped writing. 1988? He did a, I, I could tell he was doing some mental calculations. It was hurting him really bad. Uh, so I told the officer, I think you need to make a report. Our daughter, something's wrong. She hasn't called home. So he went out to his car and he ran, now listen carefully now, he ran her plates. Nothing showed up. So he said he was going to make a report. Well, I had a feeling that he wouldn't. So I called NamUs, and I talked to someone there, and she told me what to do. She says, Mrs. Colden, what I want you to do is call back and ask for another officer, and if you don't want another officer, ask for a sergeant to come out. So the next day, another officer, now we're at December 20th now, another officer came out, she apologized for the previous officer, and I told her, you don't need to apologize when you have done nothing. He's the one who needs to apologize. And I doubt that I will ever get an apology for him because he is stupid. Okay? So she made the report. And the next person I talked to, and it's really funny that I'm here and hearing all this from you, from the rest of you. The next person who I talked with was a detective, Crenshaw. Remember that name? Crenshaw. I can't remember exactly what she asked me, but what I told her was the truth. And she called me a liar. You are a bald-faced liar. I said, oh, okay. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 
So I called and talked to someone else. And I made a complaint about this officer, no, Detective Crenshaw. And I said, I don't think you people should ever send her out to my house. Please don't. But something needs to be done because this is December 20th and we still have not heard from our daughter. Well, Lawrence and I got on our computer. We did a lot of phone calling and I made up some little flyers and we started going around in the Central West End, around the Loop area, downtown St. Louis, to some of the really nice restaurants where Phoenix likes nice restaurants. She very rarely goes to McDonald's or Burger King or anything like that. She's got very expensive taste. She takes after her father. But uh, we started going around putting up uh, flyers on trees, on the windows of, of, of the restaurants, whoever would let us put up a flyer. Well, fast forward to Sunday, January 1st, two weeks later. Now remember, the officer ran her place. The officer who came out on the 20th ran her place. And periodically, the St. Louis County Police, and I do believe they were running her place, nothing ever showed up. But on January 1st, Sunday, someone called our house and asked if what he had heard about Phoenix being missing was true. And I said, yes. He asked for a description of her car, the plates, and all that. I gave it to him. Less than 15 minutes later, less than 15 minutes later, he called back and told us exactly where Phoenix's car was. It was in a tow yard in East St. Louis, Illinois. And it had been there, or the, the call had come in about an abandoned vehicle at 9th and St. Clair in East St. Louis, less than three hours after Phoenix pulled out of our driveway. Ah. Now, now, how is it that the police in St. Louis County were running her plates and nothing ever showed up? But this person calls me back less than 15 minutes later and knows all the details about Phoenix's car, where it is, how long it's been there, when the call came in about a car stopped in the middle of the street on 9th and St. Clair with the keys in the ignition, motor running, and the driver's door either open or unlocked. How did he find that out so fast? That's something you should consider. The police officer who had the car towed will not speak with anyone. His union rep tells him not to talk to anyone. He told his superior that there was nothing in Phoenix's vehicle. When we went to get Phoenix's vehicle, her designer eyeglasses were on the console. There was a big white styrofoam cup with soda still in it, a box of cherry heads, she usually likes lemon heads, but this time it's a box of cherry heads, a pair of shoes, extra pair of shoes, her designer Burberry scarf, a magazine, a book, a couple of t-shirts, some ink pens, some pencils, a notebook, and other things, and I have a whole, the tote bag full of things that were in her car, but he says there was nothing in there. Okay. I've heard such things as, she has the right to go missing. My response to that is what Phoenix would say. Mom, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. 
who has the right to go missing, especially someone who is responsible, who has never stayed away from home all night, who calls to check in even when she was living at home. I challenged the police to find two days in a row where Phoenix did not call home. They couldn't do it. But still, she has the right to go missing. I said, you people are so stupid. You're stupid. My daughter does not have the right to go missing, neither does anybody else. Well, we heard that she ran away. You want to hear all the versions? Phoenix ran away because she doesn't get along with her parents. Phoenix ran away because her mom is controlling. Phoenix ran away because she doesn't trust her dad. Phoenix ran away because she thought her dad was going to molest her. Phoenix ran away because her dad was watching her through holes in the bathroom wall. Phoenix ran away because she was pregnant. I said, look here, people. Phoenix did not run away, and you know it. None of those things are true. I don't know who's putting this crap, and I'm going to honor where we are rather than say what I normally say, but I'm going to tell you that is total, totally ridiculous, and they know now that none of that runaway stuff is true. That's one of the problems with people Phoenix's age. Who, whose whereabouts are unknown. And they leave home, or they go on a field trip, or they do this, or do that, and then they don't come back. Well, they have the right to go missing, or he ran away. He didn't want to be bothered with you guys anymore. He wanted to live his own life. What do you mean, live his own life? Whose life do you think he was living? Whose life do you think she was living? We need some kind of protocol for young adults. Young adult men, young adult women. 16 through 30. There are other girls missing people in North County, St. Louis. Did you know that? Did you know that? There are other girls missing. Most of them are black. Why do I say that? Because when I pass out these palm cards, a lot of times people won't even take one. They won't even talk to me. They're taking our children and they do whatever they want with them. They're selling them. Not only girls, but boys too. The police will not tell us who the other girls are who are missing in North County. But they know now that Phoenix didn't run away. They wasted a whole year with that foolishness. We are no longer in that house that Phoenix picked out. We're in another house that's so small that we can't even put all our furniture in it. We no longer have the luxury of not paying our house note because we have to pay rent, okay? We got a, a private investigator with money that was donated to us plus our house note money. He won't he even won't give, give us, us a report. report. We don't, don't even know, know who he really is. And now, all we have left 
is our social security check and my retirement check. That's all we have left. We have gone to the FBI for assistance. They have brushed us off. I call it brushing, sweeping us away. They've used, they've used five brooms to sweep us away. They call the reasons why they cannot get involved. I call them excuses. The number one excuse is, well, Mrs. Colden and Mr. Colden, this is not an interstate case. What? We live in Missouri. Phoenix's car was found in Illinois. What is that? Well, it's not like it's an abduction. Well, her car was stopped in the middle of the street. Keys in ignition. Motor running. Door open. What does it sound like to you? Well, um, um, was there a ransom note? Number four, we can't get involved unless the local authorities ask for our assistance. Well, that's going to be a cold day you know where because the St. Louis County Police aren't going to ask for anybody's assistance. So, these are the four excuses that I got from the FBI down on Market Street in St. Louis. So I traced over to Fairview Heights, Illinois, and talked to the FBI agent there. Well, Mrs. Colden, we can't get involved, number five, because we don't know if she was in the car when it came to Illinois. So what did he do? He acknowledged that it was an interstate case, didn't it? But they still can't get involved. So here we are, almost a year and a half later, we still don't know where Phoenix is, but guess what? Goldia sits up day and night, night and day, looking at that Facebook thing. I, I don't like that Facebook thing, but you know, people, some people can't help but talk. They just talk and they type and I look. And I've done my own little investigation. And I have torn that house up. Well, I had to because we had to leave. <laughs> and we have found things. We found things that I've turned over to the St. Louis County Police. Oh, that's nothing. That doesn't mean anything. Well, we've also gotten phone calls. I've gotten emails. I've gotten those, those uh, what do you call them, inbox things, the chat. I've gotten those. And I've told the police about some of them, not all of them. But that's nothing. That's nothing they say. My husband and I firmly believe that Phoenix is alive. You don't get all this stuff when someone is no longer living. And we need help because there are things that I have found that I know will help us find Phoenix and probably some of those other girls who are missing from North County. We need help. For the reporter who is sitting here, we need help in capital letters with about five exclamation points. We need help. There's something going on in North County, St. Louis. I feel it in my bones. The police, Detective Crenshaw, and the other St. Louis County Police and the FBI, I don't know if they know if something's going on, but if I know, little old me, they have to have an inkling, don't you think? But we need help. We need help to find Phoenix. We need, to we need help to find Billy. We need help to find everybody's child who is missing. Phoenix, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to sit down. Phoenix is a registered Republican, and I think it's very 
interesting that the one person who held out on that Billy's Law was a Republican. Phoenix has been working the polls since she was 18 years old. She missed the last few elections because of this situation. But Phoenix knows her mother. And I think that's why I found some of the things that I found at our house, or what used to be our house. She didn't run away, because if she had run away, she never would have left some of those things that I found. And she knows that I'm just like Winston Churchill. I will never, never, never give up.